set up here. Um, here you can see movies if you've seen them before. Pick a different language, we can mess with our sound settings. We really need to do that. Let's go. Oops, single play. I'm going to click pre generate character here. Um, you'll note that if we go to a new game, um, we can click create party down here. All of these options. So we can. Oh, actually. Does this work? Import. Uh, ah, yes, I think we would need to do it that way. Let's just do it like this. This is nice and convenient. We'll build it this way. Um, so uh, if you've got any character suggestions, now would be the time. I'm all ears. Um, but I am, I have not really put too much forethought into this. I just kind of decided I was going to start up this series tonight, make it happen. So I love this game, and I found out there was a community. So I uh, want to jump in and introduce myself. Um, so let's make a character. Uh, and we're just going to pick something random, I don't know, um, fighter, or like an archer, like an archer, elf archer perhaps, this is an excellent archer, we've got, uh, we can use a longbow or a shortbow archer, um, but note that you do need strength for longbows, uh, hmm, you know, I was thinking, I don't know what to do, Think a little harder, actually. Let's 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 take a step back here. What do we want to do in terms of class? Um, if we go with an archer for our main DPS, um, then I think double check what kind of bows we have access to in Baldur's Gate One to see whether we would want to go shortbow or longbow. Um, <coughs> uh, now. Seems like in Baldur's Gate 1, longbows are more available, and there's some better longbows. Let's see. Really good longbows, it looks like. Um, it looks like in Baldur's Gate 2, though, shortbows are way better. Yeah, there's a couple really, really good shortbows. Um, there are still some really good longbows in Baldur's Gate 1. Or in Baldur's Gate 2. Um, let's see. Hmm. So, yeah, let's go with Longbow then. And since we're using a Longbow, we're probably going to want a Composite Longbow. And you would actually want to make a High Strength Archer for this. That's what we're going to want to do here. So maybe a Half Orc. They get a bonus to Strength here. I saw a Half Orc. Right here. Oh, sure. And we'll say half orc. We get plus one strength, plus one constitution, plus, minus two intelligence. We don't care about that. Infravision is helpful for archer. We can make a fighter. And here for our uh, for our subclass, I think we probably just want to go with normal fighter. Um, let's see. Berserker could be a good idea, too, to get those big bursts of damage. I think... Um, may not specialize in ranged weapons. Oh. Interesting. I think Berserkers could use throwing weapons. Yeah. Yeah, Berserkers can become Grandmaster of Throwing. Could be very good with something like uh, like fire too. That's a recommended thing. Not interesting. Oh, crossbow! Actually, I hadn't thought about a crossbow. You do get a light crossbow of speed. Um, pretty interesting. Oh, okay. This is worth noting, too. There are a few end-level enemies who are immune to piercing damage and weapons of less than plus four enchantment. So we would want access to a plus four or plus five weapon at some point in Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, let's see. 
think that would perhaps necessitate a crossbow archer. Because does Baldur's Gate 2 have... Baldur's Gate 2 does have a plus 4 bow, actually. It's a plus 4 longbow. So we could go for that plus 4 longbow. I think it's, what is it, Heartseeker? Let me see. And uh, that would carry us through Throne of Ball. Let's see. Longbow. There's the Mana Bow, then the Terra Lash. Or the, uh, the Longbows in Baldur's Gate 2. So that Terra Lash, it is plus four. And we would be able to upgrade that to increase, improve its Thaco, which is very good. And its speed for that matter. Wow. That's an incredible weapon. Um, but we don't get that until late until Baldur's Gate 2. We'd have to craft it, see, for the uh, for the bowstring. Okay, that is a good option. Um, we could work towards that, and we would eventually we could get the mana bow also, um, which is another option. I think we get that a bit earlier in the game, and Sultan Asalar. So that's not too bad in chapter six. Okay, so yeah, maybe we go. Yeah, let's go for a longbow archer. And we'll make a fighter then. So the reason we want to go fighter here is so that we can go Grandmaster of Archery. Uh, Grandmaster of Archery is going to give us a bunch of extra attacks with our longbows. And with longbows, that's the big thing that they suffer with, is they're slow, and you don't get a lot of longbows that give extra attacks per round. We'll do a half-orc fighter. I'm not really sure what alignment we're going with here. Uh, let's do a chaotic... Good. Lawful neutral? I don't know. <laughs> I have to say. Uh, let's go lawful neutral here. Out for herself, but not out to cause havoc. Um, and we're going to reroll a few times. I guess 78 is pretty good. What can we do with this? Oh, we have no points here. Um, oh, the plus is on the left side. That's strange. So we could definitely do some min-maxing here wanted to. Um, we'll go up to a 19 here. So we don't even care that this is a 29 because we've got a 19. Let's see, what is the average for these rolls? I forget what that is. Is 78 above average? You can just take something above average. Um, interesting. Anything above 80 is what people say probably want to go for. 78 might be a little low. Um, but we don't really care on this character about, um, about stats very much. I guess getting some better intelligence, getting some better saving throws is always good. Could re-roll a few times for something higher than an E. Oh, I'm not sure uh, how many times is like normal to re-roll. Yeah, let's go for something like higher than E. We'll just roll for something higher than E. We don't need to go for something crazy like 90 plus. That's fine. We'll take that. We'll just bring these down to like. Under like 10 here, up to 19 there. We want to max out our parity and our constitution. Good thing. Um, up to 19. So here we're going to need to make some sacrifices. Charisma is not very important. And wisdom and intelligence, I think the saving throws there are a bit more important. Something like this. Do that. Seems fine. And we'll call that you know, half-orc fighter. As far as skills go, we're going to just go to longbow. And we cannot start out with more than two slots here. We're just not allowed to. And these styles don't do anything for us. Styles don't help. Because when we're using a two-handed weapon, it's not a two-handed melee weapon. See? So, fortunately, that doesn't work. Um, we could pick up some other proficiencies, maybe like a melee proficiency might be a good idea. We do have very, very high strength. 
but this character we want to be at, uh, at range most of the time. Hmm. But high strength, high dexterity, we could pick another uh, type of ranged weapon as well. Maybe they could double as a crossbow wielder. We would eventually be able to get the fire tooth plus six. Um, when we get to a plus five, rather, when we get to uh, Shadows of Om. The crossbow could be good to have in our back pocket. Also, darts are really, really good. So our slings. Slings actually would be a good option. Because we have such high strength. Yeah, although we're using composite armor. Let's go for a melee weapon. For a melee weapon here. I think that's going to work pretty nicely. And I'm not sure what melee weapon. So we're probably going to come back and edit this. Uh, but I could see maybe... Uh, Two-handed sword. Or no, we want two-handed sword on our main fighter. Go so X. What to say? Uh. Hmm. Want to have her use? Let's go. Maybe something. We can have her have a second mode, like a sword and board mode. That way. We get a bunch of AC against missile weapons. It's actually kind of worthless. That just gives you a flat bonus to AC, period. Good. Versus... Oh, it's a smaller bonus. I see. That's plus two. Make her sort of a fencer in melee. Uh, yeah, let's give her an axe then, and have her do single weapon style sometimes, if she needs to go into it. Um, the appearance, this is totally up to you, doesn't really affect gameplay. Notice her hair is kind of a... That skin tone is pretty close. Um, okay, so no idea on the names here. No idea on the names here. Um, I guess, yeah, if you want to suggest some names, we can go, we can, we can also pick out some names for these characters, too. Um, if you have any class or name ideas, let me know. We'll try to work them into the party here. Um, let's see. Um, uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll pick a working name of, like, uh, Big Lee Mook Smacker. That seems fine. Now... And uh, we'll probably come back and adjust that. Something a little more realistic. And... That will work. Oh. There we go. So uh, we can come through here. We can click on this. Oh, I thought we would be able to edit it. Seems like editing we would have to delete. That's okay. We know what we're going to do there for the most part. And we only we only rolled for higher than a D. It's not hard to get Again. Hope you're enjoying the stream, everyone. We're having some fun hanging out. Make sure you uh, drop a follow, get some notifications of uh, when I go live. I play tons of different games. I make some music too. I'll be streaming my uh, my process of finishing up a bunch of tracks I've been working on last year. That's coming up soon. Playing some Kerbal Space Program. I play StarCraft 2. I play uh, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, uh, on a blank. Uh, Civilization, Timberborn, all of that. Lots of stuff. Just picked up, again, another game, uh, Last Night Factorio. I a modded playthrough of Factorio 2. That'd be really fun. Now, I'm playing Baldur's Gate. Uh, I've played Baldur's Gate so many times already, but not quite this hard. Although I did beat Baldur's Gate 2 um, at this level of difficulty. I think I did work. 
I'm excited to take these characters into Baldur's Gate 1 eventually. Let's see, let's make our tank. Uh, he looks like a tank. He's very thumb-shaped. That, that's a tanky boy. Um, I'm not sure what kind of tanky boy. A tanky boy. Hmm. Looks like a tanky boy. Could have a tower shield specialist. Tower shield specialists are very tanky. Perhaps a cleric of some kind, like a dwarf cleric. Good work. Which uh, specializes in... Sh Fashion. These portraits are cool. Let's go with Mr. Sum. Uh, actually, this guy. We will make a four. We can go fighter cleric. Oh, hmm, tough choice. Fighter cleric is really good, but we're gonna miss out on a lot of divine magic. Not necessarily. This would be more of a. <clears throat> this would not be our main caster, but they would be able to heal themselves and tank for you. So this could be a pretty effective tank. Another option would be to go with like a human paladin or something. They're also really good at tanking. Two different equipped that. We could also do like a half orc barbarian. Uh, could be a really good melee tank as well. Got a lot of good options here. How we want to build this. Um hmm. Who do we want to put this together? So I think we go for We might need to go back and change. A lot of qu class options. There are some really good paladin options. Inquisitor is a good choice. I wasn't planning on bringing an bringing an inquisitor. Helpful. Oh hey, welcome. Not a fan of running five other tunes. Oh yeah. Well, we are playing on a really, really, really high difficulty, and with with a mod to increase the difficulty. So the the player characters are <laughs> they're not very good. Um, if the NPCs in the game. I guess I could use something like Shadow Keeper. I could edit them to make them suck less. Um, but I'd, at that point, I'd rather just uh, build the characters. No, that's a thought. Is what if? I don't know if this is this is weird, but what if I took like characters and built them, but then replaced the NPC classes with the characters we made, so that like Jahira say instead of being a uh, like, whatever she was, um, we would replace her whole mess of fighter druid nastiness with, I don't know, like a pure class druid or something, um, uh, with our stats and all of that, but, uh, at whatever level Jahira would be at. So not, like, breaking the game, giving her all sorts of, un of stuff, but more, like, using the characters that we made while still having, like, the party banter. I think that might work. That way, like, the party characters could interact with each other, but we wouldn't be stuck with like the crappy pre-builds that we're dealing with. Um, that's a thought. I might, um, after we go through this, I might go through and um, shadow keep some of that and come back and replay the early game to get there. That takes the fun out of building tunes. I don't know. I I, uh, I can see that, I guess, but um, I think if we... Uh, <laughs> the idea has just occurred to me, honestly. I haven't, I haven't put too much thought in it. But um, I do like the party banter. And if we do a pre-build party like this, we're not going to have any banter between our characters. Um, now, I guess that doesn't really matter as much until Baldur's Gate 2. That's really when um, the banter is a lot better. Baldur's Gate 1 is mostly story-heavy, more than banter-heavy. But that's a good point. It's a good point. Um, Well, uh, let's 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 keep building for now. We'll um we'll try to put together a nice optimized party for our SCS insane difficulty playthrough. Let's see. Hmm. Um. We are gonna have some very scary dragons. We're gonna fight and some very scary fiends. We could consider bringing a cavalier. 
there are a lot of these enemies that we're going to be up against, especially in Boulder's Gate 2. Um, Plus 3 is pretty big, uh, and we're not going to need this guy in melee, so this could be a really good option. Uh, might be a nice niche for our party to sit in. Undead Hunter is another thing, immune to hold and level drain. We are going to be up against, especially in Baldur's Gate 2, um, some a lot of hold magic and level drain. There are uh, spoilers, there are some vampires that we encounter. I won't explain much more than that, but they drain your level pretty dramatically, and you definitely want to have something to that effect or some way to deal with level drain. Um, that's fairly good. Um, now paladins, they, the thing is they can only specialize. Always oh, just made new tunes per game. You pull tunes down from the height. Um, oh, so what you can do is um, bring tunes. So I can make a, like a character in this game, and once I complete Baldur's Gate 1, I can then import that character into Baldur's Gate 2 and retain all their levels and all their stats and all their gear and basically start the game with that character. Um, and so we can continue from Baldur's Gate 1 with these characters we're making into Baldur's Gate 2 and um, probably do like the Black Pits even. We could use these characters in the Black Pits once we did Baldur's Gate, once we beat Baldur's Gate 1. That could be a really fun way to bring this team together. Maybe they get cast into the Black Pits and have to escape. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, you can um, you can bring you can import your old characters from Baldur's Gate One to Baldur's Gate Two, and then carry those even further into Throne of Ball after you've completed Baldur's Gate Two. Hey, welcome to the stream. I see we've got a bunch of people here. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. We are doing some character building. You got any uh, character build requests that you want to see uh, in this series? We can think we're still really early on, so we've definitely got space in our party uh, to do something. If you've got any names that you you think of if one of them makes me chuckle we will uh, we'll pick that name <clears throat> let's see archers archers are very good yeah we we have a uh, an archer that was the first thing i put in this party as our main dps some kind of archer and we chose a, a half orc fighter a cleric archer that could be an interesting combination let's see that cleric fighter kind of thing going on um, although, I guess, I don't know, can cleric fighters use bows? I thought clerics couldn't use bows. Um, maybe a crossbow? If they can use crossbows, I think maybe they could. I know uh, clerics have uh, limitations on what they can use. Well... We are going to want a dedicated cleric, so I think maybe the um, Undead Hunter is not exactly what we want. The immunity to level drain is so strong, though. Um, that's so attractive just because of one particular part of Baldur's Gate 2 I'm thinking ahead to. But this would be really useful for. Um, in the Blackguard, we have to be evil. This is like a Black Knight. That's not exactly what we want, um, but this is really cool if you're thinking of doing an evil playthrough. This is a very, very strong uh, build that you would definitely want to have at your party. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. let me know. I, I'm curious. I want to find out if, uh, if you can make that. Actually, I guess while we're here, hold up, I can find out right now. Elf, class, cleric. Or actually, let's check. Let's do... Well, we can't do Fighter Cleric for Elf, so it would have to be a full-class Cleric. Or one of these... Warhammer Club Foil. Okay, so it's it's specifically non-bladed, non-piercing. And I believe ranged weapons are piercing, so let's find out. We just pick some random stuff. And we get... Yeah, so we don't have bow proficiencies here. It seems like we can't do that. Yeah, yeah, with the elf rates. So this does give extra damn extra Thaco with bows, but I, it doesn't give you proficiency. With them. I think that's a five e. See, but we were making, I believe, a dwarf. Yeah, it's a good idea though. I can see it being really strong. I mean, if you really want to play with it, you could always use Shadowkeeper, which is a program that allows you to edit your saves 
mean, it's technically cheating, um, but, you know, if, if you're using it to create a class customization that you particularly want, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's just for fun. Now, I, I would try to not give yourself things that are too overpowered, um, you know, because that can really... Taking the difficulty out of the game, I think, with a game like this, can make it a lot less fun. But if you've uh, totally fine with uh, you know doing save editing, that kind of thing, just to enhance the game a bit without, say, cheating per se. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that is a thing in later editions of Dungeons and Dragons too. But this is a pretty old version. Um, I think this is based off of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, so not even, like, 3.0. This is pre-3E. Three, uh, it is a very, very old version of Dungeons um, Yeah, you know, let's do, for our fighter, for our tank, um, we're going to do a Dwarven Defender. I think this is what we want. It, for our tank, these are really 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 tanky they get this defensive stance on um, here which um you can see they gain 50 percent dr plus saving throws and they can barely move around so we have to think very carefully when we use this um, but for uh this is one turn is 10 rounds of combat 10 full rounds of combat our dwarf is going to be basically immortal um also um every five levels we get a flat but 5% DR always, which is great. Um, and likewise, we cannot reach Grand Mastery in Axes and Wars Hammers, in War Hammers, and we can't uh, go past specialization with other weapons. So there is a bit of a trade off here, but we don't need this guy to be doing all that much damage. We need this uh, dwarf to be tanking all the damage, collecting all the aggro. Do a Dwarven Defender. Um, let's see, so we'll make him maybe kind of crazy. Chaotic, neutral. These people are kind of... He's just hurling himself into danger. And, oh, we started with an 83. That's nice. Um, so let's see. We do want to see a decent strength number here. 17 is pretty pathetic. Let's try something that isn't a 17. Oh, wow. That's way better than I... A single reroll. Um, we'll take that. Um, so even though we're at 82 instead of 83, this number here, 90, is a percentage chance to do an extra point of damage. We definitely want that. Let's see, so we'll set those to about 10. And we don't need to go up to 17 here uh, for our dexterity. There's not really much point in that because it doesn't give us any bonuses. So we'll stop at 16, and that way we can have a uh, no negative modifiers on our intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. So that's great. But all of our stats maxed out. Oh, actually, we're missing one. So let's take a point out of charisma, actually. Put that into constitution. There we go. So this is our build for our Dwarven Defender. We have Intelligence and Wisdom. Hopefully that can help with these spell saves. Okay, so let's pick some skills here. Um, now, just like the other case, we can't go past specialization at this point. Um, we get axes and warhammers. So what I'm thinking is we do um, specialization in both because we don't actually need... Um, there's Warhammer, there's Axes. Oh, they're up here. So, we can go ahead and specialize in both Axes and Warhammers, um, because this single weapon style, this is pretty good, but we don't need it yet. Um, and Sword and Shield style is pretty much worthless until very, very late in the game. We don't really care about that right now. Because we're going to have a bunch, we're going to have shields anyway, and what we're going to do is give them either a single Axe and, or a single Warhammer, depending on the damage type we need, and a shield. Our Dwarven Defender build. Alright, let's pick some colors here. It looks like uh, he is maybe like a gray on gray. And a coloration here. No. Well, that's, that's pretty far off. Mm-mm. Step up. Why not? Let's give them a right thrashing. Get over here. I like that one. We'll do that. Okay. And we'll call this one. We'll make him Strongicus Maximus. 
these names are subject to change. Power is re-rolling. Uh, yeah, yeah. That can definitely make a, a big difference in your playthrough. I wouldn't blame you. You know, I mean, getting a, that extra plus two or uh, on intelligence or wisdom or having even plus one to our charisma here would make a really big difference in the late game. Um, we are going to be weak to charm spells. You know, we're going to be able to, we're going to have that, that uh, weakness to this character. Got to make sure to protect them from magic. So we're going to need to use our mages to their full potential. Okay, so this is pretty good. We can always go back and uh, essentially redo this. I think we're going to want to leave this character as they are, though. Double check everything. Let's see. Um. <laughs> okay, yeah, that seems pretty good. Strongicus Maximus, the Dwarf Defender. Uh. Okay, so we've got an Archer. We've got... A Dwarven Defender. So these are two of our big um, roles that we needed filled. We needed ranged damage <clears throat> that is steady. We needed DPS, and our Archer does both of those things. Um, and we needed a super bulky tank. So that's our Dwarven Defender. Now, what we need to do is think about uh, a Thief, two Arcane Casters, and a Divine Caster. That's the plan here. Um, some of these enemies just, they have so many spell resistances that you actually need to have the ability to cast three dispels at once in a single round. Um, so that's a big reason why we want that. But also, casters just get really strong in Throne of Fall, so we want to make sure we have enough of those too. So let's, let's work on our rogue first. I think we'll make an elf rogue. Oh, her ears aren't pointy. Darn. Well, that's Nero. Um, I've used that profile. Sure, that looks right. And elves are really good for rogues because they get bonuses uh, to short bows and uh, to their thieving abilities. They also get bonuses to dexterity, which is really great. Um, and they can't be charmed, so a big thing that can happen with your rogues is they'll get charmed and then walk up to you and start one-shotting your characters. Very unfortunate. Um, so being re super resistant to charm magic helps a lot with those. Um, otherwise, um, we can pick half-elves if we wanted to go for more of a pickpockets kind of build and start harvesting items and gold from everybody. Um, we can pickpockets uh, to great effect in SCS because everybody has potions. So we can steal lots of potions from people. This is really important, um, potentially, but that's not what we're going to go for this time. See, another option here is the Halfling for a rogue character. These get bonuses with slings. So this would be more of like a... Slings usually they are with stronger characters, so this is kind of a weird match. You wouldn't really want to be proficient in slings or put too many points into slings, but... Um, being able to use slings is pretty nice. Plus one Thaco is nothing to slings at. <laughs> and uh, gnomes get some bonuses as well. They also get some slight bonuses to this. So uh, especially detect illusion and set traps. Those are very good bonuses. Plus ten, plus five. So we're going to go with the elf. Um, oh, better. So they're, they're not as good at opening locks, um, but they are better at hiding, which is really nice. Well, hmm. We could go for this. No, we've already got our range damage. I guess maybe we do go for a halfling. Because this gives us just flat bonuses to our thievery stuff. All of our thievery stuff. Well, let's go for a halfling. Let's go for a halfling. Yeah. We could go fighter thief, interesting, but we are not going to do that. We are we want a pure thief. So we have maximum trap detection. Um, again, we, there's all these interesting things here, but uh, this is not what we're doing for this character, at least. Uh, we really want to 
maybe a dual class into these later in the game or something. We're just going to go for a vanilla thief at this time. Now let's see, and we will do... Uh, let's make her, make her through neutral. Oh, neutral good. Make her goodwill that out for herself. See these numbers. Oh, hey, we'll take that. Take that, take that 88. Okay, so big thing is dexterity. Got to max out dexterity. Um, now for a rogue, they also do get into melee into melee damage sometimes. We could go for like 16 strength. Good option. Go up to 18 constitution just because constitution is important. And that leaves us with the rest of this to distribute out. Um, so I believe, let's see, I think it's 12 that you need to use. I think you need 12 intelligence to use certain magical items. In the later part of the game. Um, Charisma, help us. Let's see. I guess maybe we could do a charisma-based um, druid or something for our party leader, or maybe a bard could be. Yeah, we could use a bard as our arcane, as our second arcane caster. That might be a good option. And uh, have that be our party leader. Um, I think we do. We do this for now. I'm not going to worry about charisma too much. Seems good. Really intelligent. Really wise. Pretty fast, pretty strong, and bulky. Okay, um, <clears throat> and we just want to put everything right now into, into find traps. Well, actually, the traps are we going to be up against this stage of the game. Um, so we're going to ignore move silently and hide in shadows for a long time. And same with set traps and detect illusion. We're not really going to build those out until we get to throw in a ball. What we're looking for now is uh, open locks and find traps. These are the big things we need. Let's actually just raise these up equal until we get them both to a high. And we're going to prioritize find traps over open locks because some of the traps are really deadly. We'll always come back for the locks. Now as for our weapons here, uh, I guess it's worth putting a pip into slings here because we've got fairly decent strength. So that is one of the reasons why I put I prioritize points in strength so that we can use slings. Um, we've got our sling user for our party, uh, and let's also give this character a weapon, maybe like a dagger, be good, so that uh, they have a, some kind of melee weapon in this as well. Um, later on, we'll probably give this character single weapon style when we're sending them more into melee. That would be good too. Let's go with brown and orange. Hmm. Where are these AONs? Ha! I will lead to the best of my ability. Open that. Ah! Do I get a hat? <gasps> a leader hat? I like it. That one. Okay. Um, alright, and we need a name. Oh, hmm. Name. What's your name? What about this at all? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go with Madam Stabs a lot. Okay. Um, now I do. It occurs to me, actually. Well, we can we can rearrange the party. I'm pretty. Sure, I don't know if this uh. Top left character is considered to be the main character. Yeah, let's put our bard in that slot just... Oh. Well, I guess not. Um, 
Okay, so it's probably just whoever's first. Well, let's rebuild our archer then. Quick. We already know what decisions we're going to make, so this one's not going to take very long. Spider. We just went with pure class fighter. All the attacks. Let's actually make her... They're kind of crazy, but good. Um, I think it goes up to. If we roll a little, I think we got like an 85 something last. Time. Yeah, that'll work. Bring these down to 10, and then just max out the other numbers. Go, and we don't care about charisma. That works fine. Okay, we're going to go with... Uh, now, we have an axe and a warhammer user already. But I think it's actually good that we did this because we gave her a secondary weapon of axe. We were going to need to do this anyway. Um, we're going to give her longbows. Uh, and as a main weapon... Hmm, we could go with a two-handed weapon. And maybe a... maybe halberds? There's a couple good halberds. Also a couple good spears that show up uh, in Baldur's Gate 2. Um, yeah, let's give let's give this character a a weapon with reach. I think that's a good option. Do we want halberds or spears though? I'm gonna check the wikis real quick and see what kind of halberds and spears we can get into. Let's make a decision on which direction we're gonna go with this character towards Grandmaster Halberd or Grandmaster Spears. Um, so Spears in Baldur's Gate 1, ooh, there is really not much. Um, yeah, they're not very available. Um, there are some good ones, in, there's some really good ones actually, in Baldur's Gate 2. Let's see. <laughs> ooh, and we removed one of the only good spears in this game, which is a plus one spear. Um, it is now non-existent because of it. It's been turned into a fine spear. Uh, so let's go with halberds then, I guess. There's some really good halberds in late game Baldur's Gate 2 and Throne of Fall, so that will be something we can really run with. We'll have a halberd longbow. Um, this is fine. Why so we choose this one? Uh, no, I, that's not the one that... Maybe I pick this. Your life is with mine. Okay, and for a name, I don't know how I feel about that first one. It was kind of a joke. I feel like um, let's see, it was McBigley this or Bigley McSmackers something. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. The name here. Go with. Oh yeah, I think maybe mix mix Smackington. It's probably what. Yes, yeah, so that's that. Something's nice about that. I think that has a nice ring to it. Particularly mix Smackington. Hmm. Okay, so we've got a dwarven defender. We've got a rogue. We have a fighter that is going to be an archer, halberd user. Let's get working on our divine character. Um, we have a couple options now. In in SAS or in SES, druids are pretty awesome in the late game. Uh, they get they get really strong. Um, but also, so do clerics. So what I'm thinking is we do maybe a cleric mage dual class. Um, kind of like airy, and just slow burn that character, let them be useless for Baldur's Gate 1, we'll just have a five character party, um, and then later in Baldur's Gate 2, that character will start to take off, um, and be able to do all the cleric stuff and all the mage stuff. 
Um, but for Baldur's Gate 1, pretty much they're just going to be able to spell magic 5. Um, maybe fire some magic missiles here and there. So that could be an option. And then we could have like a dedicated divine caster, either um, a druid or cleric, depending on which multi-class we pick. So while I'm thinking on that, actually let's work on our just pure arcane caster then. Uh, let's see, we'll keep it 50-50. Looks like, um, let's think we would need... Uh, yeah, let's 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 make a boy. Make a boy. And funny <laughs> face. Um, kind of arcane caster looking guy. Oh, that's Edwin. One of these looks like a ma it's an old magic guy. Seems magical. Guys, man. Oh, we'll, we'll choose that for now. Now, uh, hmm, we could. I mean, the gnome illusionist is really good. You get there's some drawbacks there. And let's take a look at these these magic classes that we have access to. Oh right, I was wanting to do a bard. Hmm, that would be instead of our clear our our cleric mage. We'd have a bard. Nice. Hmm. Well, there's as far as our magic ca classes go. Um, shamans are interesting, but uh, they're a little bit of a slow burn when it comes to uh, S SCS because they don't immediately summon their stuff. It takes a few rounds for them to potentially summon. So um, I tried. A shaman on SCS in Baldur's Gate 2, and even at higher levels, uh, it was pretty hard to make the the summon spirit thing actually do anything. Just because we can see each round, there's a, a chance uh, that a spirit will appear, um, and these spirits are pretty good. They're they're good spirits. They do a lot of damage, and they're they're hard to hit. Um, so it's very helpful. You effectively have like infinite summons. Um, up to five, yeah, we can get lots of those, but they just keep coming and coming and coming. But it doesn't actually start until several rounds deep in the combat. And uh, in a lot of encounters, uh, you know, four or five rounds for your for the first spirit to appear, and your character standing there doing nothing for that whole time, it just doesn't work. Um, but on lower difficulties, shaman's are really fun to play, and I mean they are effectively a divine sorcerer, so they're like a druid sorcerer, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's interesting. Um, but I wouldn't expect much to get much leverage out of the, um, the shamanic dance in a lot of um, in a lot of combats. You're you're more going to be doing these shaman specific spells um, and the detect illusion. Detect illusion is another really really big thing that makes the shaman particularly valuable. Um, our other options here, we've got uh, shamans there. We don't have any shaman subclasses. We do have sorcerers here, and sorcerers have a, a subclass, which is the Dragon Disciple. So this lets you breathe fire. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. You get big fire breath, um, 88 eventually. Uh, which is pretty interesting. But the problem is that sorcerers start out so <laughs> wimpy. They start out pathetic. Um, so that's not good. We don't want our sorcerer to be pathetic. Rather that not be the case. Uh, there is those, so then we have uh, the mage. This is our other caster, and we can see there's a bunch of subclasses here. We have a specialist class for each type of magic, um, and a wild mage on top of that. Wild magic is pretty cool, but I don't want to do that. Um, we are not going to do that. Um, you can see. We've got uh, Contingencies and Sequencers here. That's from SCS, changing how Contingencies and Sequencers work a little bit. But, yeah, we probably would just go for like a, uh, like it's a mage rather than a sorcerer, so we have a little bit more to work with in the early game. But we do have to find spells, which can be a struggle. 
Um, and we'll make this person uh, for themselves. Not a bad person. <clears throat> I think neutral good is probably where most people would fall. If they were to find alignment. Eh, that'll work. Yeah. So what we want on this character, we want max intelligence. Um, and technically, no other stat matters. I guess we could... We can completely dump Wisdom and Charisma. They don't do anything for this character. And on Constitution and Dexterity, these help to give us more bulk. Dexterity increases your armor class, Constitution increases your... Um, however, we really do not want to dump Strength. Because in this game, Strength determines how much stuff you can carry. And uh, so this character would not really be able to even carry a Staff at 3 Strength. So in fact, I'm even going to take out... Um, a couple points of charisma, just so this guy can swing a, a, a quarter staff and carry a little bit of stuff. They're not, they aren't completely useless. That should be pretty good. A lot of bulk and uh, plenty of spell slots. And can use a sling with a plus one bonus. Like that. Um, crucially, can carry enough. So we'll be able to, there will be some items for mages that are fairly heavy later in the game. And if you don't have 12 strength, uh, you won't be able to carry everything you need, much less all the potions that you're going to want to have. So having 12 strength also helps you carry lots of potions. Mages uh, make heavy use of potions. Looking at the skills here, we only get one thing. Um, and with this character, I guess we could go for a sling. Um, it would probably be better to go for a dart. Um, darts are really good, and you get a lot of attacks per round with them. These are a great thing here. As for our uh, spells to choose, you can see it picks two of them for us. These are terrible. Um, we're going to unlearn Grease and unlearn Shield. Um, and we're going to pick out two better spells. Now, Sleep is amazing. Uh, sleep is a really, really good spell, especially for the first dungeon. Um, this is going to allow us to put the um, goblins, or I think they're goblins, or maybe they're kobolds in the or in the first area. This is going to allow us to put them to sleep um, on mass, so we can this can trivialize certain very very difficult encounters. Um, protection from evil is good, but unfortunately it only affects one character and it doesn't last for very long, especially at level one. Um, magic missile is a really good choice, but again, it only you can only cast it once and it just does a little bit of damage. Um, so that is perhaps not the most helpful thing. Um, we could go for Find Familiar and try to, so that we could scout around and get some information before we get into combat. That's a good option. Um, and we could also go for Armor. This is another thing that's really important for our caster. Um, might help us stick around a bit more. Let's take Sleep and Armor. That's going to be good. And we want to prepare Sleep. This is what we need. And um, we're just going to leave that as it is. Death to you all. Your life ends here. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Name this character. What do we name this guy? Uh, um, well, he's a caster. He does magic. Uh, so really smart. Um, well, we already did Strongicus, so we can't go Smarticus. Um, even though that is kind of a little more on the nose to Spartacus, which is interesting. Um, hmm. Another kind of jokey, jokey, funny, funny thing. Hmm. Perhaps a little visit to the dopamine machine will give me some inspiration.
Jeff. Okay, this is Jeff. He's our mage. <laughs> Alright, so we've got now Ink. We've got a rogue, an archer, got a mage. We need um, a divine caster and then some kind of arcane backup character. So let's make our bard. That looks like a bard. Maybe with plus charisma, maybe those. Remember, definitely not a dwarf. Hmm. That elf seems useful, huh? Six wild mages, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that could be an adventure, especially on this difficulty. Wow. That could be wild. Bard. Oh. Hmm. We've got a few options for bards. Um, the blade is really good if you're looking for some DPS. Uh, this offensive spin bard, especially in Baldur's Gate 2, is extraordinary. So, jesters, these are okay. Uh, they confuse enemies, which is pretty nice. Um, but it's... and they can get some better effects later on. Not too bad. And there's no disadvantage. Like there's no disadvantage. Oh right, the the big advantage disadvantage is that the jester song doesn't buff your app. Uh, and then the scald does a different song. Um, so instead of doing what the bard song does, which is if we go down, I don't know where the bard song is. Yes, there we go. Um, bard song restores morale, removes fear, and protects from fear. That is the bard song, um, which is very good. Protection fear is very bad um and losing morale is very bad but the scald gives bonus to hit and damage rolls um and that improves with level so this is more like the modern bard uh like you would see in say fifth edition dungeons and dragons this is more what you're going to get um it's more like the scald uh, it used to be um except that they and the only disadvantage here is that they can't do pickpockets uh as well and i think that's probably just fine that's just fine. Um, we're going to have mages to cast Remove Fear. Um, we can also buff up if fear is going to be a problem in a fight with with protection from fear. So let's go with a Half-Elf Scald. And, and let's see, we only get neutral alignments here. Um, so we'll say neutral good. Maybe lawful neutral. Um, yeah, neutral good seems about right. And we'll re-roll for something pretty decent. Okay, there we go. One re-roll. That works. And I believe uh, the bard wants charisma, so this is going to be our party leader. Max out Charisma, max out Dexterity, because that gives this armor class ranged weapon damage. Also going to put points into... We take points out of strength. We don't need this character to carry anything at all, um, but we do need them to be able to wear armor later. Hmm, so we can't take strength too low. Um, we don't want to dump all Wisdom. We can't dump our intelligence to have a minimum of 13. Let's see. So let me see. Actually, it does see what intelligence does for bards. 
in this edition, because I have forgotten if intelligence matters at all. Been playing too much 5th edition. Uh, let's see. Bard needs charisma, dexterity, constitution. Later, though. Okay, so intelligence, really the big thing is that it helps to learn spells. Yeah, it affects percent to memorize. And, um... It affects... Oh, it's the number of spells known per level? Interesting. Okay, so... Let's see then. So we do actually really want high intelligence. Let's actually, let's dump some strength. We'll dump some wisdom. We'll dump, we'll dump a lot of wisdom actually. Bump this strength up. This. Heavily min-max here. So this character is very weak to certain magics, like uh, hold person, that kind of thing. But uh, they can use bows pretty well. They're going to be able to uh, carry certain uh, pieces of armor. Let me see. Actually, let me double check that that Blade Singer armor only. Armor. It's called Blade Singer. Uh, Blade Singer chain requires five strength. Um, can be worn by thieves and bards, I believe. Check. This is the bard thing. So this is, this lets you, so there's an armor for bards that is basically chain mail, um, and it lets you cast magic, I think? Isn't that it? Yeah. No, maybe that's not, because I don't think that's it. It would be the elven. Machine. Make sure that I I can I'm gonna be able to wear this when we get there. Um but yes, it gives five armor class. Yes, and you can cast spells while wearing it. Okay, so yes, the elven chain mail is what we're looking for. And to wear this, you need five strength. We're going to dump down to five. Actually, we're going to dump down to six. So that that's a little bit of extra carry weight um, with the uh, only minus two to our wisdom saves as opposed to minus three. That's fairly good. So, And we'll be able to wear that elven chain mail. Isn't ten too high, though, just to wear an armor? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Turns out uh, <laughs> that that mail only requires a five. So we're just... This, we'll do six and six here to give us our uh, bonuses on modifiers. But yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That's a good point. Okay, so this seems like a pretty good stat line for our Scald. Going to stay at range, hopefully not get engaged on, but if they do, they've got some constitution to take a little bit of damage. Um, now, as for the, uh, melee, the weapons that we're going to use, uh, this is a... Halfling, so we don't really get weapon bonuses. Um, we've got our mage using darts. We've got um, we're using slings. Perhaps we put a crossbow in our bard's hands. And uh, let's see. Well, our thief is using uh, daggers, I think. Um, do we have... This isn't going to be our sling user for sure. Mm. Uh, let's go then... And a Pippin Quarterstaff. Oh. 
what weapons we would want on this character. I forget what we've done in some of our other characters. Uh, daggers, yeah, they're terrible in Baldur's Gate. That's true. That is true. I've got a rogue using daggers. But yeah, there are some boomerang daggers that come up later on in Baldur's Gate 1. And I guess I, I really, I just want someone to be able to shoot the crossbow uh, when we get the fire tooth in Baldur's Gate 2. Do short swords. Get a quarter staff. Your thief? Uh, yes. Yeah, we're playing on, so SCS adds in a lot of really, really high uh, difficulty traps. So if we have a multi-class thief, then we're not going to have the detect traps that we need. Um, and likewise, it adds in a lot of really, really hard locks. And so if we don't have a pure class thief, we're not going to have the locks that we need. I'm actually going to be completely ignoring Hide in Shadows um, for the majority of Baldur's Gate 1 just to ensure that we can get past some of these traps that are effectively instant death on these difficulty settings. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're, uh, that's why we're putting in so much thought here. Yeah, I guess quarterstaff is fine. That'll be good. A little bit of blunt damage, a little bit of piercing damage. Um, more than 100 needed. So for... I don't know, actually. Um, check. That's a very good question. I think 100 is just is the, the max. SCS. I know we need... Uh, there are some illusions that we'll need more than 100 to, dis to dispel. But I don't know about traps. Let's see. Um, let's see, so it looks as though the pickpocket requires 200 to reliably succeed because it gets cut in half in most situations. Um, find traps. Ah, there is there is a trap that requires 110 percent apparently. Um, that is in Baldur's 2 in uh, Redacted. Uh, spoilers if you haven't played before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I think that's it. And then um, increasing your detect illusion past 100 makes it go faster. Let's see, okay. So yeah, we do need a lot of those. We need lots of that. Okay, good question. Yeah, thanks for that. Very interesting. I'm, uh, that's, that's good to know. I'll plan for that. I can stop at 110. Uh, now, we are not matching this color scheme. I think we're like blue. Oh, that's... Like... Right? Oh, no. Blue theme with bright shade of blue. So many colors. We'll go with that. so bad that a fault voice kind of fits this idea. Who's in for it now? <laughs> now you're going to be sorry. Mm. Go, go, go. Everybody listen to me now. That was a full day's work. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, so there's our scald. Hmm. Okay, so let's think about these names here. We've got um uh, okay, McBigly McSmackerton. McBigly McSmackerton, McSmackington, and then we've got Strongicus Maximus, uh, and Madame Stabbington, and then uh, Jeff, the mage. What about our bard? Hmm. 
anyone in chat? A few people here. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. We are uh, we're planning out our characters for SES on insane difficulty. This will be the whole trilogy we're playing through on the highest difficulty. Really fun. Heavily modded out. All the AIs are smarter. There's a whole bunch of spells that they know how to use that we're going to have access to as well. It'll be really fun. We're trying to pick a name for this character, uh, which is our bard. This is going to be our party face. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a very good point. Well, um, I will say in Baldur's Gate 2, uh, our thief is going to be able to take off. Um, those traps are really going to be handy. You're going to need a lot of traps and a lot of extra damage. And also, when they get into higher levels, they get high-level abilities like um, uh, use any item. So they can um, take on a lot of different roles, like use a lot of um, weapons or armor they wouldn't otherwise be able to use, or perhaps uh, scrolls and wands that they wouldn't be able to use. So they can really be handy in that regard, too. Um, they, but you're right that um, for a long... There's a big period of the game where your thief is just kind of like, this is this is what the thief is, and they just kind of hang out there. Um, uh, you can really, especially if you've got that... Uh, Hide and Shadows, you can really do a lot of backstab damage. That's the big thing about um, a thief at that stage of the game, if you really want to make get more out of them, um, is you got to get those backstabs in. you got to separate your thief off from the party, maybe use an invisibility potion if you have to, uh, to get them hit, hide in shadows, and then uh, go up behind a character and backstab them. That can get you, if you land those attacks, uh, you can get as much as, I think, like times eight damage. Um, so that actually can really, really be major contributions, but it takes a lot of micromanagement to make it happen. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I'm sure I'll uh, be doing that in some of these fights here uh, when we get to that stage of the game and our, our thief actually has hidden shadows, but this thief, all that they're going to be able to do is uh, break open traps and locks. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I started to do a solo playthrough on Assassin. Uh, of Baldur's Gate, and I don't think I actually finished that. I think I got about halfway through Baldur's Gate 1, um, and it was starting to get good. It was starting to get good. Uh, you lose out on a lot of those thief skills, but if you're doing a solo playthrough, it doesn't really matter because you're leveling up so fast. So for the most part, you can still uh, you can still find everything. It's very helpful. I, I, I don't think I tried that on SCS, though. So um, I wonder if it would be different with SCS installed. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that extra times two modifier. Whew, that's that that yeah, two hundred percent more damage is big, really big. Um, let's see. Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hiding is uh, just not going to happen because we've got so many traps we have to deal with. And so many locks that we want to pick to get the items inside, we're going to struggle if we do that. Um, so there's the face. That is great. We've got our party face and one of our arcane casters here. Uh, this bard is going to be able to really help with a lot of stuff. Um, and then let's go ahead and do... Let's see. So we've got our arcane caster, our bard, support. Um, let's do a divine caster then. So a cleric or a druid. Now... <clears throat> The big thing to think about here is actually not Baldur's Gate 1, because they both kind of suck in Baldur's Gate 1. Um, the big thing to think about is uh, whether you want to be summoning elementals um, or you want to be summoning uh, planetars when you get to the high-level abilities. Now, I wonder, could we make a cleric druid? It would be really wimpy for this, play for this part of the game. We might be able to make it work. We would need something like perhaps a oh uh, half elf might be able to do this the thing cleric druid hmm he's getting both divine classes in a single character. Let's cleric druid here.
All hope is not lost. I think Halfling is gonna. Hmm, we could do perhaps a human multi-class, I suppose. We want to do. That's not exactly what we want. We reduce some amount of cleric levels and some amount of druid levels. I think I was hoping we could get both in one class. That would be nice. <clears> hmm. <throat> So, I think we might want to go for an elf cleric, because strictly because of that resistance to charm, um, a lot of our class, a lot of our characters, are vulnerable to charm. So let me double check that in this edition. Is that a charisma save. A charm person. Ah, yeah, it's just Charisma, for Charm and Chaos. Hmm. Uh, well, let's see, does the Elf Racial help with Chaos, though? No. I think that, let me check if Chaos is technically Charming Magic. Uh, it is enchantment. Same class as charm. Identical to confusion. Uh -huh. Don't think confusion is charming. Let's see if confusion counts against. Ah, uh, so it's considered mind affecting, but charm and confusion are separate abilities. So we would still be vulnerable to chaos with this elf. Unfortunate. I was hoping that would give us immunity to that. <clears throat> so, not elf for a divine caster then. Um, we could go for another character that's kind of tanky. We could go for like a dwarf cleric. Tanky dwarf cleric. That could be good. Something that can turn undead at a high level. There are some problems with undead if you don't have a pure class cleric. A pure class cleric can really make easier. Hmm. Let's see. Protection against mind affecting for one turn. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Priest of Tear is fairly strong. Extra attack per round, one round per level. Oh, you can only use it times at max. Much. Hmm. Ooh, sight and Seeking Sword. Okay, Ooh, sight is pretty good. Um, and a free plus four weapon is also good. One round per level, not bad. But you can't cast spells. Be a good option as well. Or we could just go pure cleric. I'll see what happens. you would have to be good side. Undead. You could get a lot of freehold undeads, though. Be nice to have, like, a strong anti-undead character. 
be good. Hmm. Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good time. So we had some folks show up. Glad to have you here. We are uh, almost done with planning our party for this playthrough of Baldur's Gate. We're going to do all three games with SES on insane difficulties. So it's a major challenge. Very excited to get that started. We're trying to figure out what Divine Casper would be. And this Priest of Lathander could be a good option. Because I anticipate we're going to have trouble with Undead. And having something very strong, anti-Undead, uh, could be really good. All of these hold Undead casts. Very nice. And we don't mind these alignment restrictions. Um, also, Exaltation is really good. This lets us remove certain um, certain effects, which are pretty scary. It is a touch ability, but those states of mind can be pretty rough. And it, it does a protection for a turn, so this is another really, really good option that I'm thinking about. Um... Um, so Divine Favor doesn't last for very long, but... Ah, yeah, that is potentially huge. Three. So if Divine Favor gets incredibly strong later in the game... Good option. There's basically no drawback. Yeah, let's go with Priest of Tear. Priest of Tear, um, so that... We can cleanse these effects when we need to. Some of those are pretty scary. I'm worried about those. I think we'll just try to turn a lot of the undead. Or maybe pack hold undead when we need it. Well, we've got female dwarf. Do those exist? I don't think I've ever seen them. Well, there's something over 80. We'll take that. So for a uh, cleric, we need max wisdom. We also want to go max constitution. And max dexterity. Lots of armor class. Help. Don't care about intelligence at all. <clears throat> Don't care about intelligence at all. Do care about wisdom. Oh, so this seems pretty good. Yep, lots of dexterity. No point going up to 17 here. Lots of constitution. Got wisdom. So here we've got a pretty decent setup. Let's see, strength. And is probably fine. You can always give her some gauntlets later on if you go into melee and start tanking stuff. Nicely. Um, now, we've got uh, a Warhammer and an Axe Specialist in our Dwarven Defender. Already. So, I'm thinking we go for Flails on this character. And let's go with Clubs also. We don't have anybody to use Wait, actually, we want her to be able to stay at range. So, let's give her the only ranged weapon available, which is a Sling. We need to pick some priest spells. So there's some really good options here. Uh, Shalele is especially nice. And yep, that's how you pronounce that that monstrosity of a name, is Shalele. Uh, this is a very good spell. Uh, plus one to attack and 2d4 damage is not bad. It lasts quite a while. <clears throat> Bless is another one, which is really strong. Uh, this lasts six rounds, so it lasts a while. And uh, it effectively will double the bonus of our Scald. So this uh, will increase all our attack and damage rolls and our morale. Good. Uh, curse is the opposite of that, which is another thing that's very nice. 
and we can prepare we can memorize three spells so we can pick three to have prepared we already know all of these we don't need to learn them like a mage does um so let's prepare well we've got yeah we're gonna need a remove fear i think bring a couple kids We're just bringing those into the first dungeon. Um, got some brown hair. It's a little bit lighter colored, I think. More that. And she's in green. Oh, no. That's her skin color. Um, not green. Green clothing. Of my abilities. I don't know why they make this green first. <laughs> Sorry if that startled you. Okay, so we've got our priest of tear here, priestess of tear, and uh, gonna start smacking stuff up. Hmm, what do we name her? Oh, poison is good. Okay, well, figuring out a name for our cleric here. You know what's going on in the case. Who we want to call our cleric? This is our last character before we get into the game a little bit here. Hmm. Up with something clever. Some of the names um, I have used in the past. Let's see. Uh, don't see any ideas in the chat. Uh, well, she's a cleric. Put a dress like her status with a deity. about God's plan. Go. <laughs> that work. God's plan, I'm gonna fix the world. Keep our party alive. Okay, so there's the party. <laughs> We've got Shongicus Maximus, Madame Stabs a lot, Bigly, Mc Bigly McSmackington, Jeff, the face, and God's plan. We're gonna make this happen. Uh, let's see, do we need to make any adjustments here? Uh, I don't think so. Party's looking pretty solid. Um, we've got a Dwarven Defender to tank. We've got a Pure Thief to help us figure things out. Uh, we've got a Fighter, our Archer, and range damage. A step into melee if they can, if they have to. 
a Jeff is a mage, just a pure class mage. The face is a bard, pure class uh, scald. We have uh, our priestess of tear here, who is finish making. So uh, let's get into the game. Uh, now we are going to pick same difficulty here. Uh, so this legacy of ball is not really meant to be combined with S. Uh, SCS, so we're not going to deal with that. We're going to aim. This is the one that is uh, the highest balanced difficulty. I guess I would like to see. So I would like to see a playthrough of someone on Legacy. Fascinating. This 